We started uh, the Jackson Clinic 16 years ago, and it took five years to stabilize that we knew we, we were going to be successful. It does take that long in a startup. As soon as we were successful, Anna and I looked for a service opportunity for our staff. We started to have discussions about the need for those people who choose to work with us to have an experience that's unique, that's different. We believe very strongly when you find your way in this world, help others to find theirs. We really believe that if a therapist chooses to work with us, that we get to be part of their career and that journey. And so we thought, man, couldn't that be amazing if we could help enhance the careers of other physiotherapists in the world? India has always been a favorite country of mine. And we'd gone to India, we decided on the um, place, we, the hospital we would use and the group of therapists that we'd probably be working with. Identified a hospital and we were going to partner with health volunteers overseas and supply staff. And we got home from that trip and we were so excited and we got to an all-staff meeting and we announced it in the all-staff meeting. And after the meeting, one of our clinic directors came up to us, Teodros Woldegabriel, came up to us and said, I'm giving my notice, two months notice, I'm going home to Ethiopia to help the world of physiotherapy and make it better. And I'm going to dedicate my time and energy to that in Ethiopia. He was returning to Ethiopia to do what he could do to improve education. Well, that very second, we switched from India to Ethiopia because we had a man on the ground. And we both said, Ted, can we help you? Man on the ground. Oh, it's amazing. We started in 2010 in Ethiopia and in 2017, we graduated 17 doctors of physiotherapy, the first doctors of PT on the continent of Africa. We started in Kenya in 2011, started educating in 2012. We developed, trained, and then turned over an orthopedic manual therapy program to the Kenyans. We have started a, a higher national diploma program in women's health. We have a neuro rehab program that they've asked us to do more work with their teachers at the Kenya Medical Training College. We started a Bachelor of Science upgrade program at Amref International University. Recently, we were invited to Tanzania to do a site assessment. We'll see where that leads. In July of 2019, we were invited to Mozambique and that Mozambique has no uh, physical therapy education in the country. We said we personally could not launch that. Uh, we could do the clinical side and a organization called EIM and a wonderful curriculum developer. They worked with the Ministry of Education and we launched the first Bachelor of Science program in physical therapy in the country of Mozambique. One thing that's, I think, rare and special about our Africa programs is that we train the students to become the teachers. We're not just sending our teachers, our faculty, faculty from across the country and across the world in to teach them, that they carry on the education. And I think that's rare in education abroad. Richard and Anna have spent so much time, effort, and resources to not only teach them to be experts in their field, but also to be expert level faculty members, to understand how to run an education program, to set up funding so that it is self-sustaining. They've reached a new level where they can continue to grow and develop, and they've entered the world stage thanks to Richard and Anna's vision from the start. The wise build bridges, while the foolish build barriers. We must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe. 
And I found the quote from the Black Panther movie, and it closed an event. We had graduated 120 individuals who were orthopedic clinical specialists. And we felt that they needed to organize as a political body. They were a disparate group. They were 120 different people representing many different tribes. I felt in developing the presentation for this, it was really important that we find one single something that they could focus on that literally would bring them together. As orthopedic specialists in this program, they must be... They have to come together. They must come together and be one. So we organized the first orthopedic manual therapy symposium in Kenya. And we spent a whole day talking about organizing. So fast forward one year. So we show up in Nairobi and we invite, I think four or five of our leaders to have dinner with us at our hotel. And they all showed up and they're dressed up and they're coming from the second annual OMT symposium. We didn't even know they had organized it and they did not invite us to attend, which is very important in the whole sustainability thing. It, we gave them the idea. It's their organization, not ours. And I thought, how wonderful that we just give them an idea and an orientation. And as the slide said, they came together. Instead of building barriers, they came together as one tribe and built bridges. And now they're a powerful uh, political force in Kenya. It's amazing work. Um, We've, oh, I think 140 or 200 physiotherapists have been through our program in Kenya um, and over several in Ethiopia as well. And now for the first time in Kenya, they actually can get a bachelor's, which means that master's and doctoral programs are just down the road. It makes me so excited. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. And um, I can't think of anyone who's ever gone over and doesn't come back and say how impactful it is to see what that is like over there. When we send people to Africa, they come back and they say they had no idea. It was life-changing. It changes their view of the world. It was honestly one of the best things I've ever done with my life. I mean, it was a phenomenal experience. It was very humbling and, and very just rewarding all at the same time. As much as you think you're helping them, they're really helping you and giving you a broader worldview and a different perspective on life. The culture shock that I experienced was so f- foundational that I've not been the same since. I was the first one to go to, as I was sort of the guinea pig experiment, but Teodros and I had worked together at the Mount Vernon office initially, and he was sort of the pioneer in the program leading it. And, you know, we were developing and not sure what would work, you know, how you get the students to check in, how to make them accountable, you know, who is who. It's a different, there was a language barrier. There are 13 tribes right now, and all the different tribes have different local languages. And then as a nation, as a whole, they also speak Swahili. And then you have um, the more educated people who are going to speak English as well. So when I was at the hospital mentoring and helping students um, treat patients, you had a lot of people from the rural areas who were only speaking their local tribal language. So it was really fun because some of them spoke some Swahili. You might have a few that spoke English, but it's It was fun not just trying to problem solve how to help them, but also, okay, how do we communicate with them, figuring out what are they feeling and what, where is your pain? What is your pain? And, you know, just trying to play detective while also um, navigating the language barrier there. So that was, that was an interesting challenge. There was one patient in Ethiopia that really shook me. We did an examination in front of the entire class. Everyone was working together. The reason he came was he had to walk three miles to the place where he would wait to hopefully have work that day. And sometimes he couldn't get there 
because getting up the hill was too difficult for him. So we gathered some information, we asked some questions, and it turns out that he was a pedestrian in a car accident a few years earlier and had a traumatic brain injury when that happened. We've learned in school to do tests for upper motor neuron lesions for brain injury. And often we do them just out of habit, but never really find anything. There was one test where I rapidly moved his ankle up to check his reflex and his ankle started pumping and kept pumping and kept pumping. And it was like 20 beats of clonus. And I turned to the group and asked them what that was and they hadn't learned that. They didn't know what it was. And so we talked about what that represents. And essentially what we realized was his brain injury had not resolved fully. And that every time he went to walk up a hill, his ankle would go into that stretch position and he would go into that same spasm that I was able to replicate in my test. So when he went up that hill, his legs would lock up and he couldn't get up. And we were able to fashion a number of devices to help him climb a hill without going into that clonus and that spasm. And so for me, that was the first time in my physical therapy career where I had helped someone become eligible for work, to feed his young family just like I was trying to do, because of my knowledge and our group effort, we fundamentally changed his life. And that's not an experience I've had in the United States. And it really opened my eyes to the need that is in Africa and the opportunity we have to really make impact. You don't understand what you really have until you go someplace else where they don't have as much as you. Um, even the students in their training to see how passionate they were with so little that they had compared to what I had when I was in school. I was like, wow, these people really love PT and they really want to help other people. And I feel so grateful that I can be a part of that experience to help them in that. We were fortunate to work with some really, really bright physical therapists, uh, some of which were traveling three hours one way a day just to try to get six to eight hours um, of treatment time with us. And to see people who go through that much effort to learn and to dedicate themselves to the profession of physical therapy, I think is just remarkable. The learners were the hungriest people I had ever met in my life. They cared so much about learning physical therapy and being great at physical therapy and improving the lives of the patients that they cared for and changing their profession in Ethiopia that I felt more committed to helping them learn than I had ever felt in my life. They wanted to get better for a fundamentally different reason than the practitioners in the United States. For them, it's a matter of feeding your family or not if the patient doesn't get better. That someone who's had this traumatic car accident, if they can't work, they can't feed their family. And the therapist has that on their shoulders to help that person work. Those students take what they learn and they go back to their communities and they're improving the lives of people in their tribes maybe some that are in a more rural area or in the slums they're improving the lives of people who don't have access to health care so really we're, we're reaching beyond just our little clinic and our city we're really reaching the communities worldwide you teach one and you treat many and we've taught hundreds and that means there are thousands of lives that are affected by this effort. We've changed the physical therapy practice in two countries. As a small company, we could go and change the entire delivery of physical therapy care on a continent. That was shocking to me. The mission of TJC to improve human lives of our patients of each other and of a greater community is that really speaks to the Africa experience. That's our greater community. 
It, it is our greater community here. We do local things. But to look on the world stage, it, the mission of TJC is being actively uh, pursued in these other countries. <laughs>